It's Guy, again. Uh, this is another installment of This Is Your Brain on Lockdown, where I do short videos where I try to explain certain aspects of the brain and what's happening to it during this coronavirus-induced lockdown, which is a new experience for all of us. Confess, I didn't even know if anyone would want a second one of these, but based on the reaction to the first one, they do. And that's why I made an effort this time around and put a shirt on. Uh, if you look at the first video, you'll see that I'm just wearing a black jumper over my pyjamas. Uh, quarantine chic, I think it's called. Uh, also, uh, to heads up, I know it should be called This Is Your Brain In Lockdown, grammatically speaking, uh, but the title is inspired by the 1987 US anti-narcotics campaign This Is Your Brain On Drugs, uh, which has since entered the mainstream as a commonly used reference, so I felt some poetic license was acceptable. Uh, for any younger viewers, uh, the This Is Your Brain On Drugs campaign was a televised public service announcement in America aimed at discouraging people from using drugs by showing an egg being fried in a pan and boldly insisting that this, the egg, is your brain on drugs. So you shouldn't do drugs because nobody likes fried eggs, I think. Uh, in any case, uh, it's wrong. Um, any drug that fried your whole of your brain like that would kill you in seconds. And it's really hard to get addicted to anything that causes instant death. So anyway, uh, a few days ago, I was a guest on the Cosmic Shambles Stay at Home Festival. Screenshot there. And one of the questions that came in for me was uh, from a concerned parent asking, how do I get my teenager out of bed in the morning? Uh, the obvious answer is, why do you need to? Uh, we're under lockdown. Why is it important that teenagers, or anyone for that matter, gets out of bed bright and early at 8 a.m. for a hard day staying at home? <clears throat> Nonetheless, it seems to be an increasingly common concern of parents of teenagers during this pandemic uh, that the absence of school or similar rigid schedules will mean they end up spending every morning in bed and the, what should they, the parents, do about that? Now, here's the thing, uh, from a strictly neuroscientific perspective, what parents should do is nothing. Don't wake them up, let the teen sleep as long as they want or need to. Uh, this may sound this may sound utterly reckless and indulgent to many parents, but I promise you, it's science. Um, sleep is good and important. Uh, I, don't any, I don't think any parents on earth would argue otherwise, particularly if you're children of the younger sort, like mine. Uh, but as far as the brain's concerned, sleep isn't restful. Um, the brain is often as busy and active when we're asleep as it's got a lot to do. Um, uh, it's organizing and integrating all the memories accumulated during the day, uh, essentially putting all the newly acquired info into relevant files and databases, which takes time and effort. Uh, it's, uh, it's clearing away all the chemical waste produced by the brain during the day, because all the billions of processes occurring in the brain do create byproducts and cellular debris just by staying alive. And that has to be got rid of, or it'll build up and cause problems, just like regular rubbish would do in society. And also, it's believed even that sleep is a time when we're processing all of the emotional experiences that we're working through, uh, either recently or not recently, particularly relevant uh, process at a stressful time like this. And that's why sleep is important. That's why we tend to sleep eight hours a night, if not interrupted, regardless of whether we've been hauling logs all day or just spent the entire day on our backsides watching Tiger King on Netflix. And that's why if we don't get enough sleep, it's harder to function normally. Um, the brain's memory system, the intention processes, mood and emotion, regulation, movement, coordination, motivation, energy levels, they all suffer uh, if we don't get enough sleep, as all the processes of sleep, which are essential for keeping a brain in top working condition, are reduced. <clears throat> Uh, this is unfortunately very common. Uh, the sleep cycle, which regulates when we sleep and for how long, is a rather fragile system based on a complex and delicate interaction of hormones like melatonin, which you can buy over the counter, uh, internal body temperatures, exterior light levels, even genetics, they all play a part. But this means it's easy to disrupt the sleeping patterns. Um, caffeine or stimulation from smartphones or whatever, uh, they keep the attentive thinking parts of the brain active. Uh, when sleeping depends on lowering activity in those areas. So it's delayed and put off. Uh, that's a particularly relevant issue right now, as one of the things that can keep people awake and does, can keep your brain active and ticking over, is stress and anxiety, big cause of insomnia. Uh, stress and anxiety are things that are very easy to come by during a pandemic. So ideally, you should try to avoid depriving yourself of sleep if at all possible. A self-imposed routine or schedule during a lockdown like this it's great for providing structure and normality, it might make you feel better, but if you prior prioritise that over sufficient sleep, you won't be doing yourself any favours in the long run. However, all that I've said so far about sleep, that's what's happening with a standard adult brain. 
for an, for an adolescent teenage brain is even worse again. Adolescence is when the brain and body undergo a massive overhaul as we mature. All the different parts of the brain are being enhanced, uh, made more efficient, uh, excess connections are removed, and so on. And all these brain changes, or the disruption they cause, are usually sorted out and smoothed out during, you guessed it, sleep. Uh, basically, there's just a lot more for a teenager's brain to do during sleep. It's like someone trying to do a full day's work as normal, uh, but while their office is being rebuilt around them, everything's constantly being moved around, so obviously all the regular work just takes longer. Um, the upshot of this is that teenagers need more sleep. Uh, while the average adult may ideally need to get by on eight hours a night, the average teenager could do it nine or maybe even ten. And it gets worse, uh, all those hormonal signals being pumped through the teen body to bring about physical maturity, uh, but you know, um, those are important. But remember, the sleep cycle is partly controlled by hormones, and so uh, this is thrown out by these hormones in the teenage body, so they feel tired at different times of day. So if the average adult, say, starts to feel weary and winds down to sleep around 10 o'clock at night, their teenage son or daughter might not start to feel sleepy or weary until midnight or even 1am. And so teens stay up a lot later. The hormones racing around their system have essentially shunted them into a different time zone, well, as far as sleep is concerned. And that's why telling a teen to go to bed at 10pm is like expecting an adult to go to bed at 7pm. You might go to bed, but you probably won't sleep because your brain's not ready for it yet. So teenagers need more sleep, but at different times. It's a double whammy of confusion. The unfortunate thing is, we've created a society where teens can really get the sleep they genuinely need. Schools start early in the morning and teens have to go. It's the law. And most parents don't really tolerate uh, sleeping in, even on weekends, barging into their teenage kids' room and insisting they're missing the best part of the day. Um, the morning is not the best part of the day. Anyone who says otherwise is flat out wrong, and you can quote me on that. Here's the thing. There are a lot of insulting stereotypes about teenagers. They're lazy, they're irritable, they're poorly coordinated, they are unfocused, they're lethargic, they're miserable. All these things are regularly said about teenagers. Uh, but you know what else they perfectly describe all these things? People who are sleep deprived. Technically speaking, when you've got a whole uh, subpopulation of individuals who are experiencing major brain upheavals on top of chronic sleep deprivation, it would be a really bad idea to also make these individuals study intensely for exams that would literally define the rest of their lives. Nonetheless, that's exactly what we put teens through regularly. And yet huge numbers of them do do it and do it well. From a neurological perspective, they should be applauded for this. They shouldn't be shouldn't be the bare minimum what we expect of them. Uh, so much so that enough of the, if enough now, if enough teenagers do well in exams, politicians immediately start bang, banging on about how exams are too easy now. I do hate it when they do that. Um, that's not just moving the goalposts for teens, that's putting the goalposts on the moon and then mocking teenagers for not having a spaceship. And people wonder why teens are grumpy. To bring it back to the original point, there are many negative, unpleasant consequences from this pandemic, but there are positives too if you look for them. And that's true for teens as well. I was talking about this recently with the um, Make Good Trouble production company who make media aimed at challenging negative stereotypes of teens and improving parenting relations and by the current Facebook group Raising Teens During Lockdown as well as acknowledgement of the obvious stresses and issues of parents and teens being stuck in the same house for indefinite periods which you can probably imagine they've had reports of some really encouraging things like a surge in creativity from teens and a marked drop in the general fear and anxiety especially of teenage girls, of missing out, of being excluded, because because of the pandemic, nobody's doing much of anything lately. There's nothing to be missed out from. So similarly, uh, while it's not that great that school and exams have been cancelled for the foreseeable, of course, there's loads of problems in that, if you want to look at the positives, for the first time in a generation, more than one generation perhaps, teenagers have the opportunity to get as much sleep as they need, not just the sleep society allows them. If you are a parent with a teen, who you might want to take advantage of this, if you want a less irritable, less stressed offspring, then let them sleep for as long as they need to, while that is an option. And if you're a teen watching this, uh, the lockdown is going to be particularly tough on you right now. Social bonding and things like that are really, I mean, exploration, really important for teenagers, and that's been denied to you. But it's important to know that even if you are tired all the time, it's not because you're lazy uh, or some other nonsense. Having to go with a teenager for sleeping too much is like yelling at someone who's just run a marathon for breathing too much. They're not being greedy or self-indulgent. They need it. Similarly, teens genuinely need more sleep than adults and rarely ever get it. And this is how your brain works. It's important to be aware of this now more than ever, because this is your brain on lockdown. 
If you uh, want to know more about this, I did a whole uh, chapter about it in my book, uh, Why Your Parents Are Driving You Up the Wall and What to Do About It, which is pretty relevant at the moment. And uh, did these other books as well. Um, if you're interested, just flagging them up. For now, uh, stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay, in stay indoors. Stay safe. Stay indoors. Wash your hands. And if you're a teen or have a teen who needs to sleep, please consider letting them. Who knows when you'll get this opportunity again.